Hey everybody, CCJ editor Jason Cannon here. Join me for a closer look at Volvo's all new VNL, a truck that's so new I was among the first people in the entire world to get behind the steering wheel. When the VN series arrived stateside in the mid-1990s, it was a European platform tailored for North American needs. But all that's changing. For the 2024 redesign of its VNL, a six-year developmental process, Volvo went with a blank slate approach. No stone was left unturned and no legacy was too sacred to remold. The end result is a truck that Volvo claims is 90% new and 10% more efficient. And for you math majors out there, that's 100% cool. Let's start at the front. I didn't want to like the new grill because I thought the old honeycomb pattern was unique, but I, I can't do it. I love it, and it's huge. It's a key part of the aerodynamic and air management system that does three things. It cuts through the wind, it keeps the tractor connected to the wind, and it moves the wind using it to the tractor's advantage. The front hood curvature and extra low ground effects cut through the wind. The sloped windshield and wedge-shaped cab keeps the cab connected to the air, creating a continuous draft alongside the tractor. The aerodynamic roof line and improved underflow moves the wind and hands it off to the trailer. Do you see that hood scoop? Yes, it's functional. And all the other inlets create kind of a synchronized mini tornado under the hood that keeps the engine cool, limiting how many times the cooling fan comes on while also keeping the air attached to the cab. Dwayne Teagles, Product Marketing Manager at Volvo Trucks North America, explains. If you look over there on the left-hand side of the hood, that's where the air is going to come into the air inlet, uh, which is going to come from your grills on the side of the hood, okay? They also have a center vent that's in the middle of the hood. You'll see that it comes in right around the sides here and exits out the top of the hood and, and pulls air alongside of the engine and then vents out the cowl here and then further air will come down into the bumper through these vents, comes up here, cools the headlight or the Volvo dynamic steering on the other side, and then transitions into the engine and exit sounds through the bottom of the engine. The idea is to keep as much of the air attached to the outside of the, of the uh, truck and maximize the exposure as far as cooling to the engine as well. Inside, you'll find a new versatile bunk styled after a Murphy bed. The rear control panel is consolidated and gives the driver the ability to control practically every function from the bunk area. It can also be synced with the control panel and the front driver display. VNL also gets an upgraded suspension system designed to keep the driver more comfortable and supported. A new parabolic spring aids in stability while new engine mount bushings keep vibration from the road from coming into the steering wheel. Volvo's new VNL will serve as the launch pad for all future powertrain innovations, including battery electric, hydrogen, autonomous, and a host of other solutions. And as such, the truck will get a 24 volt electrical system because all that new tech is going to need a lot of power. The 24 volt architecture improves the life of all electrical components, reducing battery failure rate, facilitating quicker diagnostics and repair, and a truck auto start feature will start the truck once a low battery is detected. And of course, this is a Volvo, so safety is at the forefront. Standard in every truck are driver alert support, basic traction control support, electronic stability, rollover protection action, electronic parking brake and alarm, pre-trip assist, driver airbag, backup alarm, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, forward pedestrian detection with automatic emergency braking and stop and go, and eCall, an industry first feature that alerts 911 when sensors detect a rollover or the airbags deployed. The new D13 engine gets a horsepower rating bump up to 500 and 1950 foot pounds of torque. Volvo's six wave piston will get a seventh wave, which provides further directional control of the air and fuel mixture to create even more efficient combustion. The piston height was also decreased and paired with a longer connecting rod to minimize cylinder sidewall pressure, thereby decreasing friction and improving overall performance. The longer piston rod and slightly smaller piston allowed for the integration of a variable displacement oil pump, optimizing oil pressure regulation while minimizing parasitic losses. 
To minimize heat loss and increase efficiency, complete insulation was added to both the turbocharger and the turbo compounding unit. Internally, the turbo compounding unit refinements include a smaller compressor and turbine wheel, a strategic improvement that enables the system to recover surplus energy more effectively and convert it into usable power. The units I were able to drive were pre-production and I was only able to log about 6 miles over about 15 minutes. I do expect to get more in-depth seat time later this year as the new VNL enters production. The all-new Volvo VNL is packaged into four exterior and interior trim levels, Core, Edge, Edge Black, and Ultimate, and six cab configurations. The VNL 300 Day Cab, the VNL 440 42-inch Mid-Roof Sleeper, the VNL 640 62-inch Mid-Roof Sleeper, the VNL 660 62-inch Full Height Sleeper, the VNL 840 74-inch Mid-Roof Sleeper, and the VNL 860 74-inch Full Height Sleeper. 